Welcome to our review on the uses and dangers of electromagnetic radiation. So the first thing we're going to look at is how we actually use our EM radiation in terms of communication. So I've put our little diagram of the EM spectrum back on the right just as that constant reminder of what's actually involved in it. So the first one we're going to consider are microwaves, which you can see second in from the left there. Now we'll use microwaves in mobile phones, satellite communication, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all of those rely on microwaves being transmitted from the source to something that's going to receive them. Next one, the radio waves on the far left hand end there. We use that in order to transmit radio and TV broadcasts from the actual broadcast area to our homes. Third one is infrared, which we use in our remote controls. And what happens there is when you push a button to turn the volume up, then it sends a pulse of infrared radiation. Now, if you push the volume up button, you get a certain sequence of pulses. If you push volume down, it's a different sequence. And the TV decodes that and works out what it is you're telling it to do. We also use infrared in optic fibers to send information. Last one that we'll use for communication is good old visible light. So what you'll find is we can actually use visible light to send Morse code messages between the ships. Another key use that we've got for our electromagnetic radiation is to transfer energy. So one of the examples of this is the microwave oven that you've probably got at home. So microwave ovens, as the name suggests, emit microwaves. Now microwaves are absorbed by fat and water in food. And the key thing about them is they're actually able to penetrate a couple of centimetres into the food and be absorbed by all the particles in those first couple of centimetres all the way around. Then the energy from those first couple of centimetres are transferred all the way through to the middle by conduction. So because it's penetrating a couple of centimetres in and being absorbed by the fat and water there, then it's going to cook the food quite quickly. The other way that we can cook food is in our conventional oven, which are the ones that you typically have just built into your house. Now, these rely on infrared, same thing that you get in toasters and grills. The key difference between our microwaves and infrared is that infrared is only absorbed by the particles on the very surface of the food. From that point, the energy has got to be transferred via conduction to cook the rest of the food. So obviously that means our conventional ovens are going to be much slower at cooking food than microwaves because the infrared's only absorbed on the very outermost surface, whereas microwaves are absorbed by the first couple of centimetres all the way around. So it's going to be quicker to transfer the energy all the way through the food. Another use of our EM radiation is when we're actually using things like CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays, etc. And they use visible light in the form of a laser to read the disc. So on the surface of the disc, you can see there's all these little pits, so little holes basically that have been etched into the surface. So that as the disc is spinning and the laser shining on it, when it goes into the pit, it no longer reflects. So you end up with this series of pulses from the laser and that then tells the TV what to play. Our body also uses some of the EM radiation. So when we get the ultraviolet radiation from the sun, our skin will absorb that in order to actually produce vitamin D, which is needed to give you strong bones and avoid you getting rickets. We can also use ultraviolet in terms of forensic investigations and even in shops, because we can use that to identify forged banknotes. So you may have noticed when you've handed someone a £20 note in a shop, then they hold it under a little light to check it's not a fake. You can see on the bottom left there what a fake note actually looks like. It glows under that UV. If we're talking about forensics officers, then they can use it to detect body fluids. Even if you think you've cleaned them up, then UV light will make them glow nice and brightly, as you can see in the bottom right corner. Another use for our UV is that we can actually use it to sterilise water because it kills bacteria present. If we think about x-rays next, then we can use it in the common producing an image of a bone so you can identify if it's broken, as you can see on the left. And we can also use x-rays to kill cancer cells. And the last one we're going to consider, the gamma rays, we generally use those to kill bacteria on food that we can't heat up to carry out that process. 
and also to kill cancer cells using a device called a gamma knife, which you can see in the bottom right. So while EM radiation can be useful to us, there's also some dangers that we need to be aware of. First of all, our ultraviolet can actually damage the DNA in our skin cells, and then we can develop skin cancer as a result of that, which is why you should always apply sun creams. If you are exposed to too much UV light with your eyes, then that can lead to you developing cataracts, which is where your cornea becomes very cloudy and misty. Obviously, you can avoid that by wearing sunglasses with the proper UV protection when you're out in any bright sunshine. And while we mentioned the fact that x-rays are really useful to us in diagnosing if you've broken bones and what the break actually looks like, then x-rays can damage cells and cause cancer as well, which is why they'll check how many x-rays you've had in a certain time. The person who takes your x-ray in hospital is called a radiographer. And you may have noticed if you've had an x-ray, then they don't stand right next to you throughout the whole thing. They get you all set up and then they either stand behind a big lead screen or they leave the room. And the whole idea behind that is to reduce their exposure to the x-rays. Another thing they'll do is they'll have a special badge that they wear that actually changes when the safe exposure limit's been reached as a warning to them that they shouldn't be in there anymore. Obviously, if we're using gamma rays, then the big danger there is that it can also kill or damage healthy cells in the body as well. So while we do use them to kill cancerous cells, they can kill our healthy cells too. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now describe some of the uses of the waves in different regions of our REM spectrum, and you can also describe which waves are dangerous and why.